welcome to Hot Weekly. Hello, everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And this is Haunt Weekly, a weekly podcast for the haunted attraction and haunted entertainment community. Whether you're an actor, owner, or just plain aficionado, we aim to be a podcast for you. And I'm sorry, we are a little bit late. It's the right day, wrong hour. Yeah. We're getting this one out. Uh, but very good reason this time. It wasn't just like scheduling conflict or random thing happened. It actually was a planned thing that ran a little bit long and a planned thing we're very excited about. Yeah. Um... We went to the Paranormal Cirque. If mm-hmm. you check out our Facebook, uh, hauntweekly.com, well, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. We got a photo from there. We're posting more shortly. Uh, we went there. We had a great time. The evening just ran a little long. We weren't able to record when we got back. Yeah. But that's good news because we have our topic for next week. We've already got a lot of notes on it, got a lot of stuff done, and we're looking forward to talking about it. Several of you have mentioned you want our review yeah. on it. I. We don't like doing reviews, <laughs> per se, in this, because we think of yeah. this as an industry-facing podcast. Yeah. But at the same time, this is... It's, it's going to be an interesting podcast next week. Stay tuned. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I think that that's what's peop- what people are asking for. Yeah. They want our thoughts, in general. And that we will definitely be providing. So it'll be a full thing on it tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow. Oh, my God. <laughs> we may record it tomorrow, but you guys will see it next week. Or yeah. hear it, or whatever. But other places that you can see us include hauntweekly.com. That is our website. Like I said earlier, Haunt Weekly on Facebook. We're Haunt Weekly on Twitter. tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly is our YouTube channel. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. Anywhere you prefer to get your podcast, you'll likely find us. So come join us at any and all of those places. All right. Now, this is episode 176. We ran the numbers. And I know I make this joke every time that the math really isn't that difficult. Uh-huh. Um, but that means it's time to do the, the news. news. And we have actually a surprisingly busy news week for you. Yeah. A lot happened over the past month. <clears throat> In fact, so much we had to combine a couple of stories. and. Yeah, we're some... sure we're not covering it all. And we're not covering it all. There's no goddamn way this week. I don't know what the hell happened. Usually by now it's like, I can't find nine stories. Now this time I was like, pull up Google News. <laughs> Splat in the face with all the haunt and attraction news I can muster. <laughs> that sounded way dirtier than I intended it to. Mm-hmm. But anyways, first thing is first, we have conference reminders. And I will kick things off by saying May 10th through the 12th is the West Coast Haunters Convention in Portland, Oregon at the Doubletree Hotel, Portland. They'll be touring the Nightmare Factory Haunted House. There'll also be a costume ball, a silent auction, and the Nightmare After West Coast Haunters Convention. Convention Film Festival with the usual secret selection of films. Hauntersconvention.com for more details. Okay, May 17th through the 19th, it's Ohio Halloween and Haunters Convention (laughs) at the Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, Ohio. They will be touring six haunted houses. The pre-show will include Hauntville, the Hudson House, and Haunted Hydro. During the weekend, they'll be looking at Blood Prison, Lessons in Fear, and Trail of Nightmares. There also includes a Frickers Ball costume party, ghost hunt, and more. Ohio Halloween and HauntersConvention.com for more info. All right. After that, June 7th through the 9th in Schaumburg, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. It's the Midwest Haunters Convention at the Renaissance Schaumburg Convention Center Hotel. They'll be touring Dead Rising, Midnight Terror, Massacre Haunted House, the Basement of the Dead, and Hell's Gate. All haunts that we have been to and all haunts I will say are awesome. You will enjoy them. It's a good, eclectic mix of haunts there. I think you will have fun if you go. MidwestHauntersConvention.com for more details. Okay, June 21st through the 23rd, it's Michigan Haunt Fest, (coughs) the Oaks Campground in Munith, Michigan. It features make and takes, a campsite decorating contest, and a pancake breakfast. Some of the proceeds benefit the Humane Society. You can find out more at MichiganHauntFest.Weebly.com. All right, after that, in Mount Carroll, Illinois, it's the Hunter Horde Gathering on Jan- July 27th at the Mount Carroll Bowling Center. They'll be touring Raven's Grin Inn. And I checked, there are no other haunted attractions in the area. No. No. In fact, there's not much of anything else in the area. Mm-hmm. We're going to be blunt with one another. Um, there is an auction for scares that care and don't be a monster. There'll be free pizza and a cash bar, so be prepared to pay for your liquor. But 
free pizza to go with it. Uh, admission is $5, and the tour of Raven's Grin Inn is $15. That's face value, but to get to go with Haunters, and it's part of a Haunter group, it will be awesome. HauntorHorde.com, that's H-O-R-D-E, uh, for more information. I cannot recommend Raven's Grin Inn enough. Honestly, if you can go to this and you've never been to Raven's Grin Inn, get off your ass. Seriously. <laughs> Shake a tail feather, baby. Get on it. <laughs> All right. And finally for this week for the conferences, July 27th through 28th, it's Texas Haunters Convention at Mesquite, Texas at the Mesquite Convention Center. It features a meet and greet and a costume ball. TexasHauntersConvention.com. Haunters Convention. HauntersConvention.com. Con- com. Com. <coughs> Find yeah, out the, more. It's got the info. plural. <laughs> I know. I know I'm a jerk. I'm sorry. All right, but that's it for the conferences right now. Lots more stuff coming up after it, but we're kind of getting into the thick of the things here. All right. So, like I said, this has been a surprisingly busy week uh, for news for us, and I was very surprised to see how much there was. I kind of expected to struggle and take a while to find the stories. That turned out not to be much of a problem. And one of the things I kept seeing over and over again was a new trend, and it doesn't seem to be as big as the Valentine's Day or the um, St. Patrick's Day or Christmas trend, but we're seeing more and more haunts opening for spring break, specifically the weekend up. And it's coming up basically this weekend, and a lot of these haunts are opening up like soon. And the weird thing is, it's not necessarily haunts and spring break destinations. Mm -hmm. I've been to Atlanta. I've spent significant time in Atlanta. You do not go to spring break, to Atlanta for spring break. No. I, I have checked. You do not do that. <laughs> that, is, that is silly. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not like most New Orleanians. I'm not here to trash Atlanta, but it's not a spring break destination. No, it's not. Let's just be honest with ourselves here. But there are several haunts that are doing it this year, and I find this one a little confusing. Mm-hmm. And the reason is that spring break isn't really a set thing. Right. As weird as that sounds. Yeah, it falls somewhere around Easter, usually. Yeah, it, but that's just it. It can fall, like, two weeks before or up to Easter. It's weird. Like, here in New Orleans, it gets jacked because we, kids have Mardi Gras break. Right. Yes, they have Mardi Gras break. Yeah. It's a week off for Mardi Gras. Shut up and deal with it. Actually, it's the entire state of Louisiana, pretty much. Yeah. Even I get off of staff <laughs> most of that week. Yeah. So... Yes. It, and well, it's because your college is right on the parade route. Well, yeah. You couldn't get to work if you tried. No. You'd have to be fucking airlifted in. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I get the, because of where I work, I get most of the rest of the week, Yeah, yeah, too. yeah. But no, you're, you're literally on the parade route, though. Yeah. So I, I don't think it's by choice. No. <laughs> they kind of they got a gun to their head on that one. Um, but that means that uh, spring break doesn't really happen. There is no quote-unquote spring break. It's Easter break. Right. And it happens this coming week. Well, this week. This, yeah, it's starting well, today. Actually, so the college I work out started today. Uh, the college next door has theirs on a different week. Just proving the goddamn point. Two colleges next exactly. door don't have the same spring break. Exactly. Literally, they are next door. They're divided by a, a very cute iron fence. Yeah. It's quite adorable. Yeah. It's actually quite adorable. Yes, they share our parking, though. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's a very, very... It, it varies from place to place. So there's not really a set time for spring break. Um, so I find that to be a bit challenging. It's not like Christmas is December 25th. Right. Valentine's Day is February 14th. Yeah. St. Patrick's Day is when the hell is St. Patrick? I don't know. It's 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 got a date, though. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then part of that's because Easter moves. Yeah. It hops around. Oh, come on. That wasn't an excellent pun at all. <laughs> um, but yeah, still, this may be something worth exploring, especially if you've got a haunt that's in a destination. If I had like a Florida co- a haunt along the Florida coast, yeah, I might be looking into this more haunt, even here in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Most spring breakers come here, especially when it times out well with Mardi Gras like it did this year. Um, something to think about. But then again, I don't know how the hell you're going to get staff. If, if you're um, opening the haunt anywhere near Mardi Gras, that's just... Yeah. I didn't think that went all the way through. I... But if you're in a place where there is a large spring break crowd and you can get a staff, eh, maybe something to weigh in on. Yeah. Let us know if you do that or if you know a haunt that does. Once again, Haunt Weekly on Twitter and Facebook. I'll be interested to hear. Like I said, I only saw like two or three doing it, but that's more than I saw last year at this time. Mm-hmm. Just a thought. All right, now we're going to move along into the newsy news, the newsy news news. 
and we're starting with some very good news. And that is Disneyland Paris's Phantom Manor will reopen on May 3rd. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the article by The Laughing Place. Um, basically, Disneyland Paris has announced on its YouTube channel that it will, that Phantom Manor, the, basically their haunted man, their version of the haunted manor, um, man, haunted mansion will reopen May 3rd, 2019. The ride was closed in early 2018, so a bit over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to only be closed six months. Oops. Um, I'm not a math genius, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure. Like, 13 months is more than six. Yeah, I think so. Uh, something about the number line and yeah. all that jazz. Um, but in June 2018, about the six-month mark, they announced it would take longer than planned, and a lot of people got very worried about the future of the attraction because of that, because now it was missing a full summer. Um, so that was a worry. Um, however, it seems to finally be reopening. Various um, fans got a tour of the newly refurbished ride. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> don't yeah. you wish you could have been in that group? Yeah. I'm not even like, a, I mean, I love the Haunted Mansion. I don't know much about the difference between it and Phantom Manor. I'm not a huge Disney buff. I know there are differences, um, but I know they're very similar style attractions. Mm -hmm. I'd still love to get this fan only preview tour. This sounds awesome. Yeah, it does. Um, and the refurbishments are said to include all new scenes, all new elements and components too. So this appears to be a pretty big revamp it's not just a little spit and polish and repaint yeah this is apparently a pretty major redesign um i'm happy to hear it i feel very bad for anyone who came by in like july 2018 expecting it to be open yeah no kidding kind of sucks and kind of goes with the next story it does <laughs> um but yeah so they have overcome their difficulties and they are reopening once again come may third so if you're in europe and you are eager to check it out uh, that's your date yeah and considering they put it on youtube it must be real well or maybe not as this next story shows <laughs> the new legoland ride shut down on opening weekend and left children and parents children in tears and parents frustrated yeah this is our from the parents daily... were in tears too oh god the parents were probably crying hard on the kids yeah yeah, this is our from the Daily Star, so it's right. a little bit of, um... Right. A little and bit of, what would you call this, hyperbole going on? Yeah, Nicholas Bieber from the Daily Star. Bieber, I feel um, bad for him. Um, yeah, no kidding. Uh, but basically, they they opened up the new Haunted House Monster Party this past weekend. Yeah, it's a kid-friendly Haunted House type thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's like a It looks land. pretty cool. Got it, a little laser taggy element. It, oh, it, it looks fun. Yeah, it looks fun. I would... I'm in. You know, um... Considering how much Ellie loves Lego, I'm sure that if we were nearby, we would go and we would definitely do the Haunted Mansion if it were open. <laughs> but it closed after just a few hours because of technical difficulties. Yeah, uh, you got to love the use of the vague technical difficulties. Yeah, yeah I, I know. That, 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 that worries me when I hear that. Yeah, because that, that doesn't say... Goop. Yeah, that, that's something wasn't checked before you opened, especially to close that quickly. Um, so, yeah, there were a lot of frustrated people who had driven hours to get there for opening day. Yeah. And they weren't able to see it. Um, and, and this just happened, by the way. It was right. April 14th was the opening day. We're recording this now and we're posting this on April 15th. Yeah. I'm sorry, April 13th was opening day. April 14th is when it was shut down. Right. And we're now on April 15th. Tax day, everyone. Did you pay your taxes? Yeah. Did you file them yet? <laughs> you fucking should have. <laughs> yep. If you're in the United States, unless you're in Maine or uh, Massachusetts, I think it so is. So if you're listening to this and you haven't, and it's before midnight. Hit pause. <laughs> yeah. To work. Exactly. Um, we'll but, be here. Um... Yeah. Offering real tax advice. Um, do your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's tax advice. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. But they don't know when it's going to open back Which doesn't up. help. No, it doesn't. So, yeah, it's got a lot of people curious. Well, a lot of people who didn't drive the, there in <laughs> well, order and, to see it curious and it's like, what the hell's going on. Like, people are, like, super salty about this. Yeah. Like, super salty about this. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go to the link, and this is one of the times you should definitely go to the link, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a guy in the comments, at least there was yesterday when I was com finishing compiling all this, um, they had one comment at the time, and it was just some dude who was completely pissed off about this, yeah. and was ranting about how he waited an hour and a half in line for the ride, only get told they were closed, and he got a coupon for another ride at 6.30 p.m., even though the park closed at 7. <laughs> And others and other elsewhere, I've been seeing people make fun of the fact, like, enjoy the other, because like the sign for it says, please enjoy the other rides. Yeah. And people are like, what other rides? There's only like three things here. Yeah. Apparently, it's not a very big theme park. I had no idea. I've never been to Legoland in Windsor, UK. Or any of them. Or any of them. Well, certainly not the one in Windsor, UK. No. But yeah, no, this is just true. And we reported on this ride opening. Yes. We last did. month, I think it was. That it was coming and it was going to open. It was going to be a big deal. It was going to be awesome. And it looks like the opening <laughs> did not go yeah. anywhere near as planned. Like I said, it could have been better. People are salty. People are hot about this. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I don't blame them because one woman says she drove five hours mm -hmm. and spent hundreds of euros, I'm guessing. Yeah. Or hundreds of pounds, depending upon where she came. She drove for five hours. She almost had to come from Europe. Mm -hmm. Um but drove all this way and spent hundreds of pounds and hundreds of euros or whatever to get there. And then it, that attraction wasn't open. Yeah. Dude, I mean, I, I'm not saying I would have thrown a Molotov cocktail, but the words Molotov cocktail might have been used. <laughs> <coughs> but yeah. You wouldn't have done that. No, I would not have done that. Just would have thought about it really hard and tried to make it combust with my mind. Yeah. Okay, maybe not that either. But anyway, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's going on right now. No word on, like I said, when it's supposed to re like you said, when it's supposed to reopen, which doesn't help anything. No. I hope they actually come forward with an actual explanation other than technical difficulties. Yeah, me too. It's like just about anything would be better. Yeah. All right, moving along. Um, a Japanese amusement park has introduced a new haunted attraction. That has me a little nervous. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the Japanese amusement park Fuji Q Highland, which, by the way, apparently is a very highly rated um, theme park. It seems to have very good marks everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so, forever in Japan, yeah, just saying. Fuji Q Highland has introduced a new haunted attraction. It's called the Endless Mine, and it tells the story of robbers who tried to rob because that's what robbers do. Um, treasures from uh, treasures that dated back to feudal Japan that were in the bottom of a mine. Now, here's the reason that it gets me a little nervous. Visitors are sent down a quote-unquote mine shaft. I'm assuming it's not a real mine shaft. Yeah, Please I Please say no it's idea. not a real mine shaft. <laughs> yeah. Um, with their hands lightly bound. Yeah. So they're in a cart. It says it's a, it's a ride ride. Yeah. But their hands are bound in some way. Yeah, so hopefully the ride doesn't go astray. <laughs> yeah. And they say that the ride is largely automated. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. And using signals and relays, basically, they have a whole series of infrared signals and relays that will uh, guide the ride um, through. And it costs about 50, it costs 1,500 yen, which is approximately $13.60 to go on. Um, now, th th there seem, if you go to the article, there seems to be a lot of discussion about what their hands being bound means. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't clear from the article. It's not clear in the article, and it seemed like there was a lot of debate of them. Are they handcuffed? Are they tied loose with, like, a silk scarf? No. You know, what? how kinky is this? Piece of rope. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Basically, you yeah. know, what kind of kinky is this? Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, they seem to indicate that if you wanted to actually get out of the bindings, you could. No. Yeah. Which I would hope so, because if you have to actually escape this ride... And there's no one around you, you kind of need to get out of the bindings first. Right. It's bad enough to be in a potentially very, very dark place. Yeah. And need to get around. But to have your hands bound, like a Raven's Grin in on one of the slides. Right. Um, got to the bottom, and my feet were effectively bound by the uh, the wrapping. Right. And that and my own thrashing had apparently made things worse. <laughs> Jeez, I went down like a zero degree grade slide and my feet flashed around a little. Big surprise. Yeah. Um, but anyways, got to the end and I tried to pop up and just like fell right on my fucking face. <laughs> totally <laughs> eight slide. Yeah. And you both hear the thunk upstairs. And, and like, you okay? <laughs> 
Yeah, well, we were also watching you on camera. Oh, oh, go, oh, oh, fun! I did not know that part. Yeah. So you watched me eat it. Yeah. Oh, lovely! I did not hear that part until like <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, uh, great! Nope there was there was camera with sound. We we heard your your Punk. your shit pickle all the way down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, man. Really, Raven's Green Inn is awesome. Please just go. If you're at that conference, <laughs> the Haunter's Horror, you need to go. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> what was that? Where was I going with this? But yeah, um, like we did a haunt though where they did bind our hands. It was that one in Atlanta, right? And they Their blindfolded us. Dream haunt. Then, <laughs> but we were never more than a few feet from anyone. No. Um, and I'm sure the bindings could have been removed like that. If yeah. like a fire had broken out or anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I was just holding mine. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure I was too. Actually, I think I was hol- I was holding it and the shirt of the person in front of me at the same time. Yeah. Like I'm pretty sure you were doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was. But but yeah, I I what makes me nervous is this whole thing about we're gonna find someone's hands, send them into a dark place where no people are around. Yeah. Sounds fun. Yeah, sounds, sounds great. Hope it goes well for you, Japan. <laughs> Hope it works out. <laughs> All right, next story. Crystal. Okay. So, the Rocky Horror Picture Show. You, as our listeners know, we are big fans. We we, we might be fans. We, and the story has me shivering with anticipation. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, the castle is now a luxury hotel where you can stay. This story is by Stephen Holt. Horbelt. Horbelt. <laughs> I think so. At the it. Hornet. Yes. Well, Horbelt's next to Hornet made it really hard to read for some reason. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> so it's in Bray, England, um, and the famous Frankenstein place. And there are several scenes that are recognizable. They showed art, uh, <laughs> photos from it in the article. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is another one where you need to click the link and look at the article. Um, so you can see the stone Scooby Doo's out front. <laughs> yeah, the stone Scooby Doo's are there. The whole entranceways there. Exactly. As is the foyer with the banister. That, yes, the lucky banister. The lucky banister. <laughs> um, all that's there. Mm-hmm. And you know there are other. I'm sure there are other elements we reckon. The exterior obviously is there, except it's missing the tridecahedral dome, which was right. put there just for Rocky Horror. Yeah. Um, yeah, and apparently this is true. The dome was actually from a game show that Richard O'Brien hosted. That makes perfect sense somehow. It does. I don't know why I heard that. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that works. Yeah. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> There's no way that works. There's no way that makes sense. Yeah. But yet it does. Yeah. Like, logically, that just doesn't <laughs> yeah. make sense. Oh. What are you talking about? it? But yes, it does. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Sorry I'm interrupting now. No, no, it's okay. It's got 118 rooms. It's uh, nine mansion suites yeah. that are a part of the original castle. They also hold events there, including a 25th anniversary um, overnight film festival type thing where they're going to show Rocky Horror. You get to stay there. Really? That's um, the film they chose? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, weird, huh? Well, you know, they tried Repo first, but they couldn't afford it. Oh, God. <laughs> so. Oh, you dirty bitch. <laughs> you dirty bitch. <laughs> so, so yeah, they um, that's going to be happening on August 25th, the Picnic Anniversary Film Festival. Unfortunately, it's already booked for this year. Imagine that. Uh, but there is a waiting list so that if you cancel, you might, you might get a chance. Yeah, um, and it does cost, if you're going to do that, it's... 260 pounds or 340 per night so it it ain't cheap yeah um but it does include like meals and and a movie yeah it does um and a movie with people who are also willing to pay that amount to be next to you to watch it (laughs) yeah i i am super stoked about this we've been to england several times Mm -hmm. and i'm hoping that we're able to go again and actually go there and maybe spend Spend a night in it because yeah. we've been we went to Hogwarts, right? And neither of us are really huge Harry Potter fans. No, but we found out that literally the the castle used for exterior shots of Hogwarts. We talked about it before. Is um, not far from Newcastle. It's called Onyx Castle. It's pronounced Onyx, but it's A L N W I C K. Is how you actually spell it. And it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. Yeah. It had that neat little haunted attraction we talked about. We went uh, to the Poison Garden. The Poison Garden. Yeah, there's also Onnit Gardens, which is a separate but tethered attraction. Yeah. Which, yeah, has the famous Poison Garden. If you've seen that sign, you know, about everything in this garden is poisonous. Yeah. 
please don't touch or eat the plants. Yes. That's this garden. Yeah, we've been there. And you have to go in there with a guide. And the funniest thing about that garden is they have a marijuana plant in it. Yeah. The marijuana plant does not grow well in northern England. No. And so it's basically a stem with five little sad leaves. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a, a very bony hand coming out of the ground in this cage to protect yes. it. Yes. And I guarantee you, if you get to go, someone on your group will touch a fucking plant. Oh, God. Because <laughs> it always happens. Well, and, like, one of the bad ones was, like, the bu- they had the bushes around. Like, had, like, you're going down, like, a tunnel, right? Yeah. And, like, these are nettles. Yeah. They're not super poisonous. Right. As long as you don't eat them. But they are skin irritants. Right. Right? So yeah. you're not supposed to. And then there's this dude just dragging his hands down both sides. And I'm like, you fucking moron. <laughs> yeah. I'm going well, to... now maybe he was the guy from Spookers. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, the one that eats the nettles and... No, he doesn't eat them. He walks on them. Oh, that's right. But it's just like anyway. this guy's touching them and it's like, oh, you mad bastard, stop it. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Don't you listening? Like to yeah. any of it? Yeah. And the, you know, anyway. That's a weird tangent. Yeah. But yeah, well, we've been there and we're not huge Harry Potter fans. So the opportunity to spend the night... Yeah. And the actual Rocky Horror Castle right. is just huge, and I have to fucking do this now. Okay. This has to be a thing. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I'm look, I, I read about this. Now, here, the interesting thing is the castle was sold in 2013, and apparently they've been busy since then renovating it and preparing it for this. Yeah. Um, so they've apparently a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of work has gone into this. So mm-hmm. good job, guys. The photos look amazing. Yeah, they do. And I would be super stoked to actually spend a night there if I can. It's not a far outside of London. It's in the southern half of England. Um, it's apparently close to Heathrow Airport. Yeah. Um, close-ish, like 50 minutes away. It's a pretty rural location, honestly. And we know why they got lost. That asshole had the fucking map. Exactly. <laughs> and the castle was in England. <laughs> How'd you get from Denton somewhere in America <laughs> to England <laughs> driving in the rain, Brad. You suck, Brad. I think he's worse at directions than my dad. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, your dad didn't wind up in another country. Well, no. Well, except that one time he got drunk. <laughs> no. But he got to Canada. No, he got to Michigan. Oh. He got <laughs> to Canada enough. light. <laughs> yeah. No, but he, he, um, he, he also got stuck on the traffic circle in Alexandria and wound up in Texas. Yeah, which for those of you who don't know, (laughs) Alexandria is in the dead center, basically, Louisiana. Yeah. So he probably had a two-hour commute to get to the Texas border. Pretty much, yeah. Anyways, moving on. We have a pair of announcements from Halloween Horror Nights. Yes. These are awesome. It's that time of year. We're now getting into this part. Yeah. Where every time we do one of these, we get at least one HHN announcement. This week, we have two. Mm. Yeah. All right, the first one, this is from Christine Struble at Cultress. Um, Halloween Horror Nights has announced that the Stranger Things maze will be returning in 2019. Um, it was part of last season. It was a very popular part. In fact, it was, I uh, remember they did the YouTube video where they had the cast of Stranger Things walk through the Stranger Things haunted house. Right. <laughs> Which just seems a little meta, I'm going to be honest with you. Well, it also seems a little messed up, you yeah. know. <laughs> Especially since, you know, they're kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyways, um, now they did say that fans are encouraged to watch or finish season three before attending. Right. Uh, that there will be things and elements from the new seasons. They're clearly updating it. But um, it's unclear how much will be changed and how much new will be added. All they have posted right now is the 37-second teaser trailer, which doesn't confirm anything, really. Right. Except that it's Stranger Things. Um so, yeah, this is interesting. Hell, HHN doesn't often repeat themes. Yeah, but I think the series um, has caught fire. Oh, yeah. And that people are, um, like, really wanting to see more of it. And the sets and things change, and it's it's a pretty... Open book. And... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't. In fact, I think in the time we've been doing the news, and it's 176, so we're talking over yeah. three years here. I don't think we've seen HHN repeat anything. No, I don't <laughs> believe so. Um, no, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm, uh, in many ways, it's a good thing, especially since they've been expanding and adding more mazes and haunts. Right. It makes sense to not have to replace every goddamn thing. Right. Exactly. And it also breeds some familiarity too. Yeah. 
And like you noted, this is something that they can really play with and do a lot of things with. It's more of an open book theme. Yeah, basically, you know, I kind of like this idea of them continuing this and expanding it every season to include something from that season. Mm -hmm. Because then you could follow the entire story of Stranger Things through a haunted house. Well, probably not entirely, but... Well, you, you know, but the, you, the gist of it. Yeah, you, you can, the, it's a skimmed overview. The cliff notes. Um, you get the cliff notes. Yeah, but I also notes. find it really interesting because some people at Universal, as the article points out, are holding very big secrets because uh, season three isn't out yet, but yeah. they're already working on the scenes from it. Yeah. So somebody at Universal knows some stuff. Yeah, they do. Um, now, they probably have not started actual construction yet, I suspect. They usually start construction about a month beforehand. So, I guess we will see. Yeah. <laughs> but still, very, very interesting to see Stranger Things returning. And I'm, and I'm like mm -hmm. you, as long as the series is going, then there's there's no reason they can't just keep doing it every year and just revamping it and changing it and expanding it. Yeah. Hopefully that's what's going on. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that idea of a, a haunt that builds on its story year after year and the mortuary was doing that for a time very early on yeah when they first started the first yeah. i would say five years in the mortuary mm -hmm. they had a story arc that yeah. they were telling and you, if you went year after year you got and honestly with the mortuary you got most of the story from the actual story page and the pre-roll right. stuff they did I, I, as far as like storytelling in the haunt it wasn't that great mm -hmm. um I think like Hell's Gate did a better job of that element of it, for example. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it's one of those deals where yeah, I, I, I like the idea of the overarching story too and being able to tell and shift and advance it rather than haunts that just have a story and it's the story every year. Yeah. Or what we do, which is we just have a completely incongruent story every year. Right. It's just different. We're an anthology haunt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think I just invented a new term with that, didn't I? Yeah, sure. Why not? It's a, for an anthology haunt. I like that. That sounds professional and stuff. Yeah. It doesn't make us sound like weird losers who have a podcast they record in their back bedroom. No. <laughs> yeah. Bedroom. Using that term kind of loose, aren't I? For the, yeah. At the moment, it's... it's... Back storeroom. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. The next HHN story... <laughs> They are also adding a Grizzly Gladiator Blood Pit Haunted House. There's not a lot of information on this one right now, mainly because it's not based on anything that I could No, buy. it does not appear to be. This is just an original one. This is from Fox 35 Orlando, by the way. Um, but, yeah. Well, the basic premise seems to be this is set in ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. And what's going on is apparently there's a drought in Rome. Right. And droughts, of course, suck, especially in ancient times. Yeah. And so the emperor of Rome has declared that they will be holding constant gladiator games until the rain comes. Because that fixes it. Yeah, well, it's... They were a superstitious bunch, I get it. Yeah, it, well, <laughs> the mercury might have had something to do with that. Fair enough. Mercury and lead. <laughs> Fair enough. But anyways, then the species known as the nightingales come to feast upon the dead and dying that the mm -hmm. games produce, and that's where we literally come in. Yeah. It's what, and that's about all we know, literally. It's not connected with any known universal property. Yeah. Um, and the long and short of it is they're just trying to do something that's Roman gladiator themed, which is very interesting, actually. It is very interesting, and I'm really curious what these nightingales are going to look like. Yeah. Well, there's like there's two elements of it that I find fascinating. Mm -hmm. One is we don't see a lot of haunts, period, that muck around with Roman gladiators or Roman stuff in general. Or ancient stuff in general, yeah, ancient, other than like maybe The Egyptian. curse of Amun-Ra or whatever. Yeah. You know. yeah, Egyptian get, I guess, is the... Yeah, Egyptian gets the some... The only one that gets pulled. But even then, you most typically see Egyptian stuff in, like, escape rooms, not yeah. pure haunt stuff. No. I think we've done two or three Egyptian-themed escape games. Yeah, but... there was there was the Egyptian check section several years ago at 13th Gate. Yeah, and it was one of the weaker sections, too. They got rid of it. Yeah. Um, had some cool effects. Had some cool anyway. effects. Very cool effects. I love yeah. some of the lighting effects they did. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, as far as, like, scare factor, mm -hmm. they've done, they got better. Yeah. And they, they replace it with better stuff. <clears throat> but yeah, you don't really see much ancient stuff in general, but especially not ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. And 
Second thing is they've created a pretty large amount of lore for this one attraction that's a part of Halloween and Horror Nights. Yeah. You know, that's pretty interesting. It is. It's a different direction for them. Because which... usually when they do these sort of off-brand ones, mm -hmm. it's just, and here's the ghost house. <laughs> yeah, it's generic topic yeah, for a haunted house. They don't really develop as much lore for those because they have so many other lore-laden haunts, like the official ones. Right. Um, they already have a ton of lore. They don't really feel... It. They, these are supplemental haunts, basically. Yeah. And they can be very, very good, mm -hmm. from what I understand, because I've never been able to make it to HHN. I've heard they're very good a lot of the times, but they're not lore-driven. This one seems to be a lore-driven new property, which right. is interesting. It is. All right. Well, one of the things we love talking about, because we're nerds about this type of stuff, mm -hmm. is we love talking about ways to get year-round income from a haunted attraction. Yeah. And this next, and these next couple of stories uh, deal with that actually. Um, first is Etna Scare House is now been converted temporarily into a laser tag arena. This is an article by Christy Lachlan at the Tribune, uh, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Scare House, which is a pretty big name haunt. Um, has been transformed into the quote-unquote Rogue Laser Grounds, a multi-level laser tag game. Um, and this game does not feature any horror elements. They've done away with the horror. Hmm. It's interesting. Yeah. Because we've talked about the idea of laser tags in a haunted house. Yeah. Basically. Um, so it's interesting to see a haunted house remove those elements to hmm. do laser tag. Yeah, basically, you know, and, and that makes some degree of sense, because if you're going to do a full teardown yeah. and rebuild, yeah. when you tear down, what do you got? You've got a giant warehouse of some stripe. Right. Um, in this case, a 2,300 square foot facility, which I'm assuming that's not the entirety of the haunt, honestly. It's probably just a section of it. Right. But that's plenty of space for a really kick-ass laser tag arena. Yeah, it is. So while you're, you know, building your stuff, in other areas, mm -hmm. you can do this here and keep money coming in. Yeah. Um, it's open Thursdays through Sunday between now and April 28th. So if you're going to go, you might want to step on the gas. The yeah. article is from March 20th. They're doing it one month, basically. Yeah. And the Scare House itself will be celebrating its 20th year this year. Congratulations, guys. Yay. Awesome, guys and gals. Awesome work. Um, but yeah, I just love this idea for getting year-round revenue. Especially, as like we said, if you're if you got a large enough space where you can tear down one section... Mm -hmm. Put this up, start it, have the games for a month or two while you do other things elsewhere. You touch up other stuff. Right. And then bring that down and do the rebuild. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And like I said, I just got an email today, actually, or not today. It was uh, over the weekend from New Orleans Nightmare House trying to sell me on their zombie laser tag experience they're doing. Mm -hmm. I um, have not made it. I'm probably not going. Who am I kidding? <laughs> no. So it's nothing against the concept or the idea. It's just I've never been happy with any of those experiences I've gone to. Yeah. Not fully, you know? Right. It's nothing on them personally. It's just we've done several zombie laser tag experiences. Never been over overwhelmed with joy. Right. So, and it, since it seems to be a traveling company thing, I don't see why this one would be hugely different. But anyway... But no, this is a neat idea for getting some year-round income from your space. I really like this idea. Yeah, it is. Uh, but still, I do agree. I, 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 the first thing I thought when I did here is that tear down and rebuild is going to be hell. Though, if you were <laughs> yeah. doing it anyway, not yeah. a big deal. But if you do it specifically for this, expect some cranky employees. Oh well, yeah. Depending on how much was in there, um, yeah, and that the space that's quarantined off for this, yeah. Um, it also gets families associated and. In introduced to the name of the yeah the that's a good house. point and you're going to reach a different market with this and it's a chance to offer promotions and and do some product like basically you can offer a two dollar or five dollar whatever discount on tickets to anyone yeah. that plays laser tag yeah you have coupons yes bounce back in october yeah bounce back in october or if you're doing a, anything between now and october bounce back at that if you're doing a midsummer halloween or whatever right you can bounce back to that. But yeah, bounce back in October and we'll give you five bucks off. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. That is. Huh. All right. So the next story comes from, it's about a couple who run the Full Moon Cineplex, Nashville's friendly house of horrors. So this is in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, and it's the, they run the, both the Slaughterhouse, which is Nashville's longest running haunted attraction. 
but it's also got a Cineplex in it and the oldest tattoo parlor mm -hmm. in Nashville. And yeah, they got a lot of well-established, long-running businesses here. You can... Exactly, all in one location. Or oh, I think the tattoo parlors elsewhere, but they're all the same people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it, it's amazing what they've managed to pull together. Um, but what I found interesting about it is that the scare house and the movie theater are in the same building. Right, exactly. And they bought it in for the haunted house, for the slaughterhouse. They're because the slaughterhouse has been open a long time and they're um one of several owners who have owned it over the years. And whenever they bought it, they're like, Hey, this has a movie theater. We should show movies. So they did. Mm -hmm. And their their premise of how to do the movies is a little different. Mm -hmm. They don't just have a traditional, what we think of as movie theater, with like rows of seats and shit like that. Right. They've got every seat that basically seems to have a table from what we saw in the video. Exactly. And they specialize in dinner and movies. Yeah. Which basically is for $22, you mm -hmm. get a ticket to the film, and tickets are normally 7 bucks, And you get a buffet dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking A, man. I want to go. Yeah, I do too. Next time we're going through there, maybe we'll stop. Well, here's the thing. I was thinking about this because this, these guys specialize in cult films. Yeah. Like you look at their current crop. They're doing like a Clockwork Orange is one of their upcoming films. They're doing Singing in the Rain, which seems a bit odd. Call that a cult film, but whatever. Um, they're doing Clockwork Orange and they're doing a, some random obscure foreign horror I hadn't heard of, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, but anyways, they have some really cool stuff coming up. But here's the thing I was just thinking about. Um, this Thursday coming up, we're going to see Rift Tracks live. Now, we're going right. to our local theater to see the Fathom Events beamed in version of it. We're huge Rift Tracks and MST3K and cheesy movie fans. We were doing this even before you and I were doing haunting in many ways. Right. At least haunting together, I should say. Yeah. Um, but one thing that's interesting is, do you know where those shows beam from? Um, Tennessee. Yeah, it's Nashville, Tennessee. It's the Bellacourt Theater in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah. We could theoretically plan a trip to see a Rift Tracks live live uh -huh. At the Bella Court, and then go and see, and see some, maybe get dinner and a movie at Full Moon Cineplex. That sounds like a fun trip. That would be badass. Yeah, I've been thinking about this ever since I found this article. I think I'm planning <laughs> a vacation here. All right, we can do that. And it wouldn't. Um, yeah, we just have to find them when the next Rift Tracks live event we can get to is. It's a bit yeah. of a drive for us, but we can do it. Yeah, um, we're tougher. But the other thing in this article is that they um, have started a horror anthology series, yes. and they just finished their short suspense stories. Um, ben Dixon is, was the director, and it starred Stacey Dixon, his wife. Um, and, and they are the well couple as, behind it, too. <laughs> yes, they are the couple behind it, as well as Kane Hodder, which was Jason Voorhees in several of the Friday 13th movies. And Gunnar Hansen from Leatherface from the original Texas Chainsaw yeah, Gunner, yeah. So. Uh, so that just premiered um, April twelfth, but that's that seems to be why they're they're in the news is because they just in addition to continuing all these great businesses, they just made movies. Hmm. So now they're get, they're getting into that too. Yeah. I guess uh, three successful long-running businesses. Well, two long-running businesses. One that's still fairly new, right? In, in the theater, um, two three businesses weren't enough. Nope. <laughs> Good assholes. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, save some for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the slackers among you. Um, all right. Well, our final story this week is that the Haunted Attraction Association has announced its 2019 O Scares Award. It's O S C A R E S, like the Oscars, but scares. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that makes them damn hard to search for. <laughs> you punch in the O Scares Award in Google or DuckDuckGo or whatever, it just assumes you fucked up the spelling of Oscars. Yeah. It it, it doesn't take you seriously into like no haunted attraction. I was just oh, you want this page? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then it feeds it to you. So if you if you, if you don't click our link, that's what you got to go through. Mm -hmm. um, basically they had a Vendor Excellence Award which goes to vendors for the haunted attraction industry they awarded it to Rip City FX Closed Casket Studios Dapper Cadaver and European Body Art um, they had a Board of Directors Awards these go to haunted attractions 
They did Fear Factory in Utah, Hobbs Groves in California, and Trail of Terror in Connecticut. I think Fear Factory and Trail of Terror are both haunts we've covered various ways here mm -hmm. in the news department usually. They had a Home Haunt Award, which went to Michael Bachman for 39th Street Cemetery in Missouri. And I, they didn't list the state it was in in the mm -hmm. list, so I had to go find it. <laughs> and In Memoriam for Scott Morrow in Pennsylvania. And finally, a Lifetime Achievement Award to Bill Hollingstead of Knott's Berry Farm in California. That seems like a pretty easy Lifetime Achievement Award. No. Anything related to Knott's Berry Farm, or rather not Scary Farm, it should be, mm -hmm. is a pretty easy one to give away. Yeah. Um, congratulations to all the winners. Yes. Awesome job, all of you. Um, yeah, I, I think this is a, a good thing. People talk about... Okay, we have talked at great length about how most top 10 haunts in the country lists are bullcrap. Yeah. Because it is literally physically impossible for anybody to go to all the haunts in the country. Yeah. And therefore, you can't really get a side-by-side -side comparison. You could do it regionally. Right. Like, I think we pretty much go to all the haunts regionally. Yeah. So we can give comparisons in that area. Yeah, and, and there are other states who have their own individual and then, exactly, no, and, groups that and do that, that. And that's why the local ones I don't mind as much. Yeah. Because those actually make sense. Yeah. You at least have the, the same people going to see all the haunts, and we can at least get one person or one group of people's opinion about which is the best. I may disagree with said opinion. Yeah. You may disagree with my opinion. Yeah. That's fine. You can be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but... The point is, you know, you at least get one consistent opinion where we all know the top 10 lists, like nationwide, the best haunts in the country are just popularity contests, usually decided by either a quick Google search, what are the biggest haunts, or by something far less ethical. <laughs> yeah. And that that's frustrating. But I think when these type of awards come from within the industry... And they are for the industry. They're not mm -hmm. meant to be public-facing. Like, this isn't really meant to be something for public consumption. Right. I think it could be very meaningful and very impactful. And it's a good thing that we can do for ourselves. Because, yeah, okay, the Oscars are horse crap. Mm -hmm. I get it. The Emmys are, too. Yeah. All that stuff. I get it. It's crap. I get it. But that being said, one of the valuable things about it is that it is the industry rewarding its own. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's inherently a bad thing. I do hate that they've become these big public events and, you know, there's so much money to be made by one, winning an Oscar. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a ton of money in winning an O Scares. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but it is nice for the industry to reward and acknowledge its own. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, all in all, it's been a busy, busy week of news. A lot's been going on. Um Legoland, get that fucking ride open. <laughs> Seriously, guys. If it's not a bit, if it's not open already, by the time we are actually recording this, which is like I said, the day after I read the article, it, it needs to be open ASAP, dude, because there ain't nothing more embarrassing than promoting a big ride opening date. Yeah. And then having to shut it down immediately. Now, to be fair, though, um, Disney World famously did a soft launch which that's one of the things that wasn't this big promoted launch either. But did a soft launch for Alien Encounters, which ain't there no more. Right. And I am pissed about that still. I ain't, I ain't shelled off. Um, and the, the urban legend, at least, and if anyone can verify this for me, hauntweekly.com, hauntweekly on Twitter, hauntweekly on Facebook, uh, let me know. But supposedly Roy Disney went to it, watched the people coming out, and said, no, shut down, they're not scared enough. And then they worked in ramping it up, and boy, howdy, did they. <laughs> Woo, doggy. Mm -hmm. That was something. I, I'm, I'm very, I, it's a great tragedy to haunted attractions everywhere. That is not open. Uh, but anyways, and it's been converted to this stitch adventure or something like that, and screw you guys. Just yeah. screw all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone involved in that, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, everyone, thank you for spending the damn near past hour with us. We greatly appreciate your time. We greatly appreciate your patience as we get this episode up a little bit late. Still on Monday, though. Still on Monday. Um, but you have been listening to Haunt Weekly, episode 176, talking about the March and April news. We can find us at hauntweekly.com, Haunt Weekly on Twitter, Haunt Weekly on Facebook, tinyurl.com slash hauntweekly is our YouTube channel. All of our previous episodes are available there for very easy listening. Um, you can also... Uh, find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever finer podcasts are distributed. 
But until next time, I'm Jonathan. I'm Crystal. And we will see you guys. Well, not see you guys. You will listen to us. You next. will listen to you us. You will listen <laughs> to us next week.